All right, go ahead. All right, so we are calling this meeting to order at 5.32 p.m. Um, we have all of our members here this evening except our uh, Carol Tushinsky, who is uh, a new member, but she was unable to make it uh, this evening, but uh, she has indicated that she'll be able to work her schedule to be with us. And then uh, we also have a few other folks in the process right now becoming members. So hopefully we will be full shortly as a committee. Um, Jeremy, Jeremy Johnson's not present. So I oh, have not. heard from he, him. I don't know if there's a motion to excuse he him. Said he, he said he would be here. So I guess we could hold off before we call him missing or absent. You know, he said he would join us. So, um, so that all being said, taking a look at the agenda, um, consent agenda. Also, before we call to order, are there any additions to the agenda as presented this evening? Hearing none, we'll move on to our consent agenda portion of the meeting agenda, and that is uh, to approve minutes for January 2020 and the minutes from the June 2020 meeting. Did everybody get a chance to look those over? They were sent out a while, in the last day or so. Are there any changes to any of those sets of minutes that anybody wishes to present? Hearing none, I would entertain a motion for approving the minutes as presented for January and for June 2020 with final review by Tina for any corrections before submitting to the commission. I move. Moved by Rusty. Second? Second. Second. Okay, I'll give it to Jamie. It was a tie there. So she's out there with the chickens. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Hey. Opposed? Hearing none, we have the minutes approved for the January 2020 and January or June 2020 meeting. Public comment. Is there any public comment this evening? No, there is not. Did we just, we approve both sets? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Uh, hearing no public comments, we'll move on to reports. I'll start with my report as the chair. Um, as I mentioned, as we were getting going, we have a new member this evening uh, who cannot join us. That is uh, Carol Tuchinski. She is uh, joining this committee and will be with us uh, at the next meeting. She regretfully wasn't able to work her work get her work schedule adjusted to be able to be with us tonight. Uh, there's a couple other members that are in the process of coming on board. We'll hopefully have an announcement on that uh, coming up soon. Um, the biggest thing for me, for you guys, is that uh, we did the presentation for the City Commission on Arts and Culture uh, at the last City Commission meeting. Um, overall, I thought that the presentation went pretty well. It gave what I considered to be a good overview of the efforts of Arts and Culture uh, the staff, uh, the office, and members of this committee uh, in light of the challenges that have been presented by COVID-19. Um, I tried to leave the commission with the impression, and I think it worked, that um, the office pivoted very quickly, uh, was able to take uh, the loss of Art Week and turn it into other beneficial programming using uh, virtual reality and virtual settings and such through the websites and also gave them an overview of a series of other projects that are underway, including the Marquette 365 website and others. We'll have more on that coming up in just a little bit. Um, but the one thing that really came out of the meeting was discussions about the cultural trail, as we've been talking about here for a, a couple of years now. Um, Commissioner Stonehouse in particular issued a challenge. He said to get it done. Um, and that means that there have been other groups that have stepped up in the past over the last several years of same similar kind of projects that haven't gotten done because of various reasons. Um, the big thing for me out of that conversation was I don't really want us to fail um, and not get this done. And we should all work to help the staff, help Tina and the staff with getting this done as uh, expeditiously as possible. He said, get it done in this next year that when we come to our next presentation, we will be talking about the having it basically be ready for installing some things, parts of it. Um, 
I think we can do that because there has been a lot of work that has been put forth already uh, on this project. And I don't believe the commission was fully aware of that. And I'm kind of glad I didn't tip our hat to it a little bit too, because it allows uh, us to come with the, come to them with a fairly developed plan within the next couple of years. Tina will have more on this uh, in just a moment, but if there was anything that came out of it in terms of something to get done in the next year, maybe it's certainly not the entire trail. There's a lot of ground to cover there literally, but coming up with a section or a portion that has the first phase in effect. The city likes to do major projects in phases. I think this one will be one of those. And I think that we're closer to it than already expected. But overall, the uh, feedback from the commission was very positive. I believe we have, a, still have a supportive commission for arts and culture in the city. The issue is of course that tax revenues are down considerably um, and the city has the responsibility to be fiscally sound with the money that comes in in the budget and also do the things that we need for infrastructure improvements as well as the maintenance and police services and all of that. It all comes out of the same pie. So I would encourage this committee to be prepared for less money for Tina and her staff to operate with in the next fiscal year and into the next couple of them. But I did also tell the commission that in effect, they should put the money where the mouth is because if they think that Marquette has very cool arts and culture, which they do, then do not overly cut it so it can't happen. Um, of course, you know, and we'll see how that ends up going in the process, but that's basically my report. Um, I'm open for questions from you guys. Okay, we'll move on to Tina's report. And uh, one thing I do wanna say that the, 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 the presentation should be available on the City Commission's website, uh, the agenda listings, where you go to Marquette's website and you go to agendas and committees and all of that. There should be a video there. It also should be available on the City's YouTube channel. You can watch the presentation there. Yeah, Tina? Walt starts about 33 minutes into it and he goes exactly 13 minutes because I wanted to let Tracy Wascom know about how much time she had. So um, in about 10 minutes of questions. So YouTube is the fastest way. Um, before I get into the nitty gritty, I just wanted to make um, a mention of things you've probably noticed. Uh, a mural has gone up at the loyalties uh, building um, on the corner of Barriga and Front Street. Um, pretty excited about that mural. And it also pays homage to the uh, Black Lives Matters. Um, and also, if you go to Marquette 365, I went today and I was pretty astounded about the number of virtual art uh, opportunities there are in this community and also music opportunities. A lot of places are opening up their outdoors to music and um, of course, some outdoor social distance uh, concerts. So check it out, there, but there was an inordinate amount. Um, the Maritime Museum is doing a plain air painting for children. They usually do it during art week, but they're doing it and they're doing it really safely where everyone gets a box and then goes to the uh, area that they want to paint in. There doesn't have to be any contact between people. So that's good stuff. Um, at the meeting, the library lease was approved. Um, I'm in the process of getting it signed, um, a five-year lease starting October 1st was approved for the art center. Um, and that is for basically, um, I believe it's like $2,500 a month for $30,000. Um, library update for opening, which affects our opening. Uh, July 4th kind of changed stuff. Uh, they were planning on opening to about 100 people a day, but really they want to wait to see what happens in this two week period after the 4th of July. Uh, fiasco as far as lots of people and a potential spike. Um, they are opening on the 15th for uh, computer uh, appointments only, um, but I really don't know when they're going to let people in. And it all depends what happens in two weeks. Um, so keeping our eye on that, um, staff did meet today with Lakes Prairie Art Association about exhibits. Um, again, if library, if 
the board has to allow us to invite people to look at an exhibit social distancing. That's still uncertain. Um, they did agree to have uh, August exhibit virtually. So Taylor in our office is working with the August art group who have agreed to do a virtual uh, reception, virtual maybe studio tours, that kind of thing. Um, that will be offered to other artists as well. So they might have some virtual art exhibits this year. And um, they'll work closely with uh, Tristan for the using the community art wall on Marquette 365, which he'll show you tonight. Staff's been working really hard on Marquette 365, which you'll hear from Tristan tonight. Um, and also the Memory Box, which is another um, project that Tristan's actually been leading. If you go to our website, the city's website, you'll see all the links for the Marquette Memory Box, what it entails. I've talked about it with you guys. Um, but if you have want to share your art, your spoken word, or your um, visual arts, spoken word, or performances, there are links. And a um, great opportunity to share what you've been working on. Uh, public art, um, the updates, they're presenting on Monday. If you have a chance to tune in Monday for the special presentation at the City Commission, it's going to be a very, very good presentation. I think the Commission's going to be pretty, pretty excited like they were. It'd be hard to beat Walt's uh, presentation, but Tracy's pretty engaging. Can you tell me again when that is uh, that presentation is going to be? Um, Monday. Does it start at six thirty, Walt, or is it six? The 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 meeting is at six. Right. So it probably would start like at six twenty or so. At the city commission meeting, so we could stream it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, but they did have a special meeting, the Public Art Commission, to go over their budget, and they'll be presenting that at their presentation as well. Um, but then again, I think I mentioned the Project Blackboard uh, mural for the the uh, basketball courts at Hurley Field to everybody. Did I yes. Mention? Yeah, so they're going to be presenting that more formally to the commission in August, but that's what they're moving forward with. Um, also, I told you about the cultural trail, but one of the things that um, they brought up was uh, that the uh, public comment that that young woman um, made to both groups about uh, what can we do in response to what's happening right now with art. Um, they decided to set aside $6,000 for August or September to do murals on the bike path of the streets. And next at their next meeting next Wednesday, they will come up with a formal proposal to the city commission. But this would, they're looking at murals that are um, uh, inspired by words like respect, hope, you know, using uh, simple letters that the community could paint um, and participate. Um, and so who, decided, who decided to set aside that money? Was it the Public Art Commission who made that decision? Uh oh. Yeah. I think that's who she was referring to, yes. Okay. Um, and. They will be, so you said on the context of them presenting coming up on Monday, it would make sense that, that would be part of what they were doing. But of course, she's, she seems to be a bit frozen right now. So um, so how's everybody? <laughs> Great, how are you? Oh, wonderful. Nice weather we're having. Oh, wait, something's moving. There we go. Hey, uh, did you guys hear anything I said? Well, uh, you froze at a certain point. Um, uh, you were talking about um, the allocation of six thousand dollars. We lost uh, internet at City Hall, so oh. it, it just came back on. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I was just, they. Uh, Jamie, Jamie had a question. Jamie had a question. Was it was it the Public Art Commission that has allocated the six thousand dollars? Yeah. So they have. They're actually a, a decision making commission, unlike advisory committees. And the city sets aside thirty thousand dollars a year for public art. This is the third year, so we're up to ninety, actually eighty seven because they've spent some of it. So once they put forth a budget, the city commission does have to approve it. So they're suggesting. 
this project and they'll have to suggest it more formally in August and actually get a stamp of, of approval, but they're gonna introduce it at Monday's meeting. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so that's going on. Um, I, today, um, on a short uh, side note, I presented to Connect Marquette and it's nice because I used the same uh, presentation that was created for the Arts and Culture Committee and got a lot of good feedback and a lot of ex, um, excitement by that group. Um, there are about four people in attendance mm -hmm. and um, that was really great. Um, and they wanna stay involved and uh, keep following what we're doing. So uh, that was good news. Um, and that's it. Tristan, you did some television this morning, I think, didn't you? On the uh, projects going on, so that was good get that out there as well so mm -hmm. are there any questions for tina hearing none we'll move on to our discussion starting with old business which is the cultural trail discussion uh tina what do you have on that um updates include i met with and i'm forgetting his last name you might be able to help me um judd and i'm forgetting Jorn? sojourn judd yes. sojourn judd sojourn and dan truckee um, who runs the Belmere Heritage. Judd teaches at Native Studies and then Martin Reinhardt also joined us. And it was a really compelling discussion. Um, we spoke specifically uh, talking about all that's done for uh, revering our industrial heritage and the iron ore. And uh, at one point, uh, Judd thought that the, uh, the charcoal beehive kiln was an obelisk that was somehow native. He was very disappointed to find out it wasn't connected. Um, and so th that brought up a conversation about the gardens, the village and the gardens that were in that area and all of the unseen things that um, of the uh, Anishinaabe. So the conversation was mostly about the Anishinaabe um, being um, a part of the cultural trail. Um, but then they also talked about when we actually start this process um, about telling the story um, that we need to invite small, the families that still exist, uh, like the uh, descendants of Peter White, Harlow, Loonsfoot, Kabagam, these groups, because um, we should make this very personal and sensitive to those that are still living, those descendants. Um, we also talked about place names and what I really hit me hard was that this isn't just about putting up a sign in front of the lighthouse or the iron or the ore dock. Um, this is becoming a catalyst for a community conversation and talked about using the cultural trails an opportunity to talk about, for example, we refer to that area down at the waterfront as Founders Landing, but that's not official. That's just what people say in a, condo is called that. Um, so what are pl place names and can we, can we develop new place names like Marquette Mountain? You know, what is its place name? Can they, if they can't find the original place name, can they make a new one? So there's going to be some really interesting conversations as that gets deeper. Uh, I also spoke to GEI um, and they're putting forward all of the items that we can use as matching funds for that project, benches, um, native mm. garden, different things like that. So um, that's the work so far on that. And hopefully um, the goal is next uh, week to start writing that narrative. Um, Tina, you and I talked about this a little bit after the commission meeting and uh, you know, I, for those that have the institutional memory about when there was. Uh, oh, Walt froze. You know, I have a couple of questions. Uh, yeah. The Walt comes back on. <clears throat> he talked about uh, the commission wanting to move forward, uh, especially uh, Commissioner Stonehouse. Uh, and I guess I'm wondering, are there phases of development for the cultural trail? Uh, you know, if so, what are they? And then my kind of my big question is here with place naming. Uh, 
is there a way that we could encourage the use of historical names with integration with current names uh, and develop a narrative that people would read or pull up by scanning on their phone or something that connects uh, history and, and the present uh, with social awareness in mind? Yeah, um, I don't have phases right now. I'm really looking at um, if we were to receive this money, if we don't, then it would be in phases. Um, but definitely um, figuring out with GEI how much each sign would cost, about how many we need, and uh, public art that we want. Um, so I'm not sure. I don't have a answer, a definitive answer to that question yet, but I think I will in the next couple of weeks. And then um, obviously it would depend on the funding that we get. Um, and people have talked about the apps. The History Center is working on an app. Um, I'm not including that right now in that grant request, but that could be an interesting, everyone's mentioned that, that we should have an app. It was Carol Fulcher's experience that people don't use apps, but I'm thinking she's thinking of recreational and when you're biking on trails, I think people that are history buffs that are actually going for the tour, maybe that's a different you know, demographic. Maybe they might actually use a, an app. We talked originally too about having a script and a narrative and, and giving a tour through it. So I mean, I, I mean, places where you could read things, but actually have a guided tour as well. And that would be probably less expensive to start than an app, yeah, but it could, could develop into one. That's really the History Center's uh, area. And I'm totally going to, um, they can be involved. And I hope that this trail gets them to do more of those, right? But I see that as their, that's their specialty, Maritime and the History Center. So absolutely. Walt, you were cut off during your comment. Right. I'm not sure exactly what happened there because you guys were all working fine for me. So it's the magic of <laughs> technology. Anyway, um, no, I was just uh, basically the long and short of my conversation is to remember that when there was an effort to build pavilions uh, along that stretch, uh, probably about 15 years ago-ish, maybe a little bit more. Um, there were groups of uh, people that got, got involved that started to talk about different nationalities, different groups and everything in our area. So in this particular discussion, there has to be an awareness of multiple stakeholders that have the personal interest that you were talking about with both Marty and Judd. And just to keep that in mind that there are other groups, other people that will also want to be a part of it and to not let it be dominated by one or two people uh, you know, that have particular interests in it. I understand their interest in it and I support obviously what they are talking about, but it can be a delicate issue. We found that out the hard way the last time around with any kind of project like this so as you're working on this and you're working with the Public Art Commission and you're working with us on it, keep that in mind uh, as well. And I know, Michael, you were starting to talk about something with Commissioner Stonehouse and everything. Um, I, 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 don't, I don't believe we have any phase plan, right, Tina? I mean, you mentioned that already. Yeah. Well, maybe we could come up with an overall plan of a dream what we'd like and then split it up into phases and see if we can get, you know, some good concrete starts for it and then a building. I mean, that could still change as, a, as you go too, but at least, you know, have a, an overall plan for something. So right now, Rusty, just to uh, get you updated, the idea is signage, the bike path's already there, right? So developing that story and that I've been interviewing different groups um, and interviewing is just to see where our commonalities and to kind of develop if we get funded to um, share all the information that's been collected so then people can have a greater discussion. Um, so it would be signage, uh, matching funds for public art, so a large uh, public art piece, um, mm -hmm. potential lighting, um, and then um, marketing just of that, you know, your marketing this trail so there might be maps that could be right. created and that kind of thing i think once we get going the list is going to get really big but right now the focus is uh signing getting signage and interpretation 
and um, on that trail. And I encourage all the members of the committee to work with Tina and the staff on this individually. We as a committee will support this effort, but uh, you know, if you have particular interests, don't hesitate to get, it, get involved in the process a little bit more. Absolutely, like I would love to talk more with you, Michael and Rusty, about things that you think we should you know, include that maybe I haven't even thought of. Yeah, I remember us talking about this two years ago. Yeah, we kind of came up basically about two years ago. Okay, uh, any other questions or comments for Tina on old business? Okay, we move on to new business, Artsopolis and Marquette 365. And I believe Tristan is with us this evening to talk about that a little bit. Tina, do you have any background before Tristan takes over or? Yeah, so um, I've told you at the last meeting that we are, staff has reallocated uh, budget um, that would have been spent on Art Week to really develop uh, the Artsopolis Marquette 365 website. And boy, it's, um, it keeps growing and growing and growing and growing. I think the presentation to the city commission really inspired all of us here at the Art Center to go even further with it. So it's more developed than when we last spoke. And Tristan um, has been um, really juggling this very complicated uh, beast of a website and he's here to kind of explain what we've done, where we're going with it, and uh, maybe some insights to uh, that all of you can share with us. I know he's got some questions for you as well. Take it away, Tristan. Hey everyone, good to see everyone again. Um, let me see if I can share. Yep, so I'll share my screen. Um, first off, We'll just take a look at, I guess, the immediate differences um, between the old site and some of the changes that we're proposing right now. So this is the site as it looks right now. Um, I'm sure most or all of you are familiar with it. Um, we're not changing too, too much on here. Uh, that's not necessarily true. On the homepage itself, we're not doing too much with it. However, um, I've been working with Jeff at Artsopolis and a few weeks ago, he drafted uh, a new homepage, um, a dev site, just something to kind of start putting these ideas we have into action, see what it would look like. Um, so before I show you the new one, I just want you to know that we're going to be changing that quite a bit more. Um, not in terms of theme yet necessarily, uh, but in terms of content and menus and everything. So that's the old site. So some of the major changes you'll see right away. Uh, that's the wrong link. <laughs> there. This is the new site. So we're, in looking at and talking about what we wanted to change, we looked at um, all these different calendars from across the country. These are all of uh, Artsopolis's clients. So we kind of sifted through those and said, well, what do we like? What do we not like? Uh, what kind of things do we want to introduce to make this just a more, at, least, at the very least, visceral pleasing and um, thinking ahead, more just more functional site in general. So some of the immediate changes were getting big header images here. Um, so these will be rotating. Uh, they can be either links to pages that we want to promote. They can be reserved for special events, um, bringing to an event listing, um, just a way to really make the front page pop right away. Um, some other things uh, in terms of the aesthetic that we're planning on changing. So because we're doing rebranding work right now and trying to figure out what our new logo is going to be, this is going to be swapped out with whatever that ends up being. Uh, we're also trying to rename the calendar right now. Um, so we're discussing possible alternatives uh, to Marquette 365. And feel free to interrupt me at any point if you guys have any questions. Um, so we're hoping to have a specific logo for the resource itself. And then uh, with this rebranding work we're doing on our department logo to have some kind of mention up here about that. So what that would look like is Tallahassee does it. Um, they have the specific resource logo and then they tie it into the department there. So just a way to kind of hammer home uh, and further promote the department and our divisions as a whole. So that'll be one change that we're going to be making. Um, dang, things in the way. Uh, and then we're going to be reorganizing all of these uh, menus up here. 
So this is quite a bit different. Um, I'll move these over here. You'll see on the old site, these are all calendar categories, right? So they all drop down and break down into um, what people can select uh, as their events falling under. But since we wanna add things such as a community art wall, public art directory, um, artists and organization directories, about us, community resources, uh, we're gonna be kind of reframing how all this looks up here. So this is our first go at it. Like I said, this is a few weeks ago. So we cut down the categories up here into just a few. We're trying to just consolidate them and see, okay, what categories can fit together? Um, and thinking further, things like kids and family can go under community, et cetera. I'll get more into that in a little bit, um, but that's gonna be one thing. And then, like I said, get a community art wall tab up here, stories that will be blog posts that Taylor's gonna curate. Um, really just getting as many as many functional features we can on here that can really, it, I mean, it can be a one-stop shop. It can be for anybody who's coming into town and wants to meet an artist or learn about the guilds that are here that meet regularly. It can be for a local who wants to know what events are going on this week, as it is right now, um, and virtual art gallery, all these things. So that being said, um, I guess the biggest the biggest thing right now is deciding how these categories are going to be laid out. And this is where I'm going to want some input from really as many people as possible. Um, I think Tina Taylor and I have been looking at this so much that it's all kind of melting together. So getting fresh eyes on it and, and taking, you know, taking the perspective of, okay, if I was an artist who moved to town two weeks ago, what would I go on here and want to see? Um, so kind of keep that in mind as you think through this. And I can send these links out too, if you guys want to take a further look at, at how it's laid out right now. But I came up with this general, or I guess I should say we have um, pretty much all this past week been kind of chipping away at how we want these menus to be laid out up here. So I'll just walk through them. Um, we're thinking about taking can you the- Can that up bigger maybe? Can you What's that? The Word document, can you make it bigger? It's hard to read. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's easier. Okay, so um, consolidate the calendar categories further. Um, we originally thought maybe we want to keep them all listed up here, but then we thought, no, that kind of gets confusing because if you have these calendar categories next to things like the art wall or directories, uh, you kind of forget that these are all for the calendar. So we talked about doing a drop down called what's happening, um, and under that would be all of these categories. And we decided to break them down like this. Um, we've been working with the Senior Services Division and the Parks and Rec Division, kind of talking through it because this is a departmental initiative. I mean, it's being led by us at the Arts and Culture Division, but they had some input on, okay, well, if we're making this a city resource, if we're tying it back to the department, is there some way we could, you know, make the most of this and have it be a guide um, to kind of clarify what all these divisions are doing? So we worked on this today, and these are the, these are the categories we came up with. We're going to keep online and streaming uh, as it is right now, that's going to be there. Um, if things ever get completely back to normal, we could always remove it, but that's going to be at the forefront. Just an easy way to sift through that and pick that out right away. Arts and culture, that'll be all the arts and culture events. They're broken down. Let me go back here. They're broken down like this right now. Um, so we're going to need to do some work on this and figure out how can we keep it neat, keep it tidy, but still cover all of our ground. So we can talk about that in a little bit. Um, community, that's going to be for events because Market 365 is, it is a community calendar. It's, it's very arts heavy. It's very creativity heavy, but it's a place for everybody for every event. And we've been encouraging people, the chamber has been encouraging people since they started it up, um, for everybody in the community to use it, um, regardless of, you know, what type of organization you are. So community will encompass things that are not arts and culture. Um, and a good thing to note here is that you can be in more than one category. So if it's an arts and culture event that's, that fits into some category of community, then it will show up in both menus. Uh, sports and recreation is another one, speaking to that parks and rec thing, so anything that's happening at our parks, uh, athletic events, et cetera. Um, and then adult programming, older adult programming. Um, just a, a way to, to streamline senior services and the programming available for seniors. So that's what we're looking at for the breakdown right now. And we can get back to this in a little bit, because that's mostly what I'm interested in talking to you guys about. Next up will be a stories tab. And like I said, this will be what Taylor's kind of working on. Um, things like blog posts, interviews we do with creatives or other people in the community, articles we want to write, 
any PSAs, really anything noteworthy that we want to be featured. So you'll see on the dev site, they also added a features stories section. So that's what, where these will pop up, um, which is just, you know, it, it's just a great way to sift through them and they'll cycle as they go. The newest ones will show up or we can choose which ones to feature. Can I interrupt for one second? Um, Kristen, what I, what I think is going to be really exciting about the stories, because they'll show up featured stories on our main page as well. Um, it could be something like, you know, Hiawatha celebrates an anniversary or Pine Mountain's 20th or, I mean, it really becomes kind of a word of the street for arts and culture. Um, and they can be uh, interviews. Um, so it's something that I could see the community getting interested in and also pitching ideas and stories to this blog as well. So um, we want them to be informative. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Um, and then another exciting thing is our community art wall. We started that up to go along with the Market Memory Box project that we're running right now. Uh, originally intended as a way to collect art that was produced during the pandemic. Um, but because we're investing in this module, uh, it's going to be a permanent part of our website, um, which is awesome. So this can allow us to do, uh, you know, in addition to our physical exhibits, actually in the gallery, um, to do special virtual exhibits, um, get maybe some new art. Even we are talking today, things like artists from out of the area who can't necessarily come up and physically be here to show their work and get some more diverse voices being told. So I'll show you what that art wall looks like right now. Um, so at the top is a little description of it. Again, I'll send this out so you guys can check it out. Um, but then down below, you can put the exhibit information. So as it stands right now, we can go in and add a new exhibit whenever. Um, and then on the back end, we basically input all of this information, um, which is people send us images. Um, and in terms of this project memory box, we're asking people for their personal reflections. So we can write whatever they want to write along with it. Um, things like artists who are selling their work, like John French here. Um, he gave me a price. Uh, he's definitely exhibited before. So he had this kind of layout and he sent it to me as such. So it gives a lot of flexibility for whatever we want to do. So that's pretty exciting. Um, moving ahead, public art that's being worked on by the Public Art Commission. Um, Tina can probably talk a little. Yeah, Tina, could you talk a little more about what specifically will be in that menu? Yeah, so the public art, um, we're not sure when you drop down, um, we're thinking that you might be able to sort, you could look at the entire public art collection, or you could look at Marquette city owned public art, down public art located downtown, public art on NMU's campus. And that's where the cultural trail would be as well. Um, there's a map component um, with that. So you'll be able to click on an area or look at a map and see where the arts located, um, which is really nice. Um, and we'll be showing a lot. We have about 35 pieces that we've inventoried and have pro had professionally photographed, which also includes uh, art on private property. So um, the mural on the Black Rocks Brewery or something like that. So this is going to be a really good relationship builder. Um, that's how Artsopolis kind of, you know, we're not charging people to have the public art that they have in this invent in this uh, inventory, um, it's relationship building. Um, we're hoping that they advertise. For example, if someone's searching public art in NMU's campus, um, then NMU can get a pop-up advertisement. If someone clicks on that art piece, an advertisement pops up to go see Forrest Roberts' new show. Um, and also, uh, I think that our uh, DDA and Travel Marquette are going to be and our partners are going to be likely to partner with us because we're basically, this is something we want the community to have access to. I don't want it to be a pay to play. Um, so it's, um, I think, going to be a real win-win for the community. Excited about that. And then moving forward, a directories tab. Um, we talked about putting up like artist directory, organization directory, et cetera, et cetera. And we thought, why don't we just consolidate that into a drop down again to keep it neat? So this directories tab, kind of inspired by, let me find which website it is. This one. This is what I'm kind of thinking it'll look like when you go there, um, which gives us a lot of flexibility versus having to have a whole separate page for each. Uh, these can be links to PDFs. They can be their own pages, et cetera. But the way it works right now, uh, at least for these guys, you can click on artist directory, and they have a running list. You know. Um, 
alphabetically sorted. You can click, gives you all their background, whatever they want to say about themselves. So that would be very cool. Um, organization directory, we have that right now on the current site, um, which just whenever someone inputs an event and chooses an organization to present it, it's inputted as an organization. So that being said, these are all the orgs that have uploaded their information and can be hosts of events right now. But you'll see there's no sorting to it. So the arts is mixed in with the, um, you know, the community organizations or the retail shops, um, which, you know, for, for the sake of being able to find things easily, even though there is a search function, we want to be a little more clear cut about that. So we talked about breaking that down, um, having an arts and culture organization directory where we include things like uh, arts and culture nonprofits, things like Hiawatha, the symphony, city band, um, to guilds, um, to, you know, the yarn winders fiber guild that meets here to, you know, what have you, any, th any organization or group that is tied to arts and culture activity. Below that would be community directory. Um, that's the name we have right now, but that'll be for everything else, similar to what we do up in the calendar. Uh, venues for rent will be another one we're talking about. Um, so right now there's a venue directory on the old site, but that's just any place that has hosted an event, not necessarily things that people can rent. So we wanna have a different resource where if someone wants to host an event, they can easily find um, pricing, uh, availability, uh, further links, et cetera. So there'll be an option. Um, and then these things down here, we're still kind of figuring that out, but these will likely be, likely be links or PDFs, things like the senior services directory, which is produced by the county, that could be a PDF. Business directory, we can link to things like LSCP, um, you know, just relative link. Or if we decide to go a different direction and we want to include more, we can do that too. But that's what's nice about this is that we have flexibility. Visitors linking to Travel Marquette because they have great, great, great information on their site about hiking trails, about restaurants and everything. So that's, that's what we're looking at for that. I'll move quickly through these last ones. The resources tab, um, we kind of broke it down to calls to artists, grants. Um, right now, COVID-19 resources, any relevant links for people want to learn about what the city is doing, the policies currently in place. Agencies, um, still kind of figuring out where we want to put this, but that would be also things. Um, this, this could very much go in the directories. We're still trying to figure that out, but things like LSCP, um, uh, and then up to statewide and national agencies, you know, the NEA, um, MEDC, uh, all these different uh, agencies, just so people can kind of sit through those and learn more about, um, you know, not only our partners, but just things that are available to them uh, around the country. Um, a tutorial, we want to get some guides put together on whatever this ends up being, uh, so people have a really handy resource that they can, oh, it's actually that simple to put an event in. Uh, because we found over the years that a lot of people can get intimidated by this website. Uh, there is a slight learning curve. Um, anyone can do it, but it's, you know, you, you have to, you have to work on it a little bit. So making that as clear cut as possible. Uh, the about us section, talking more about our department as a whole, breaking it down, just a, an area to explain what the community services department is because that, that's a big focus of our rebranding initiative right now is educating people about what all we do because we span so many different directions between the three. Um, this would be an area also for the master plans that we come up with to link to those uh, also available on the city's website but we figured if we have if we have the space we may as well put it here too. Staff listing, contact information, um, and I'm talking about putting in a, a city programming tab too, just something to highlight what are because the calendar includes things from the whole community, what are the things that our departments or our divisions focus on and promote? Um, just as kind of an added push for us. So that's a lot, but um, that's what we're looking at and working on and trying to just whittle down, figure out what makes the most sense. Um, so I don't know if anyone has any questions right off the bat or if there's things, Tina, that you wanna focus on and get input on. I'm happy to click around or take notes. For my own records well thanks thank for that to, thank, to that. yeah thank you for doing this it's so nice to see some work being done on this now you know one of the things that i would say I, I completely echo that um is to keep in mind that the original genesis of the idea of this website was to serve as a community calendar and i think that what that means is it's fundamentally a resource site 
And I think that um, as you are deciding and prioritizing what's going to be in effect first that you see and what you can get, um, that's where I see like obviously the what's happening kind of thing, which I love that, how you've got that all kind of broken down. You can mm -hmm. pick from there. But then perhaps going to the directories and the, as you move across the top menu bar, you would put maybe directories next, resources next, before you start getting into the more community art projects. Only because the reason that any of this happened in the first place was there was a big call for um, a community calendar, which now has become a resource uh, center, which is what the MAC has become. It's more of a, a place to turn to to get a lot of these questions answered. But I'm, I'm really looking forward to this um, because you're right, the site has a little, it looks like you're going to make it more visually interesting and more um, interactive just by having to click on a few things to get to a few things and not have everything handed to you. Um, the biggest challenge we've had with this as a source has been even though everybody wanted one and something got built, then for some reason it just didn't get embraced and get used by all of the various interested stakeholders that came to those public meetings when we were doing the master planning. So, you know, it's also as the office develops this, there's going to need to be a concentrated effort on telling everybody about it. Hey, self, look at self -marketing. it. Self-marketing. Yeah. yeah. Self-marketing. Um, and the only other thing I'm worried about when I see all of this information you're looking at putting in here is making it too big for the staff at the Mac to really kind of wrap its hands around it with all the other things that are going on. So try to prioritize the ones that are the most important to at least get the first version up and running that you all can keep your hands around it without it getting too daunting to work on and then it sits dormant and then nobody looks at it, you know. I, I think what's happened is that we were given this opportunity through this horrible um, pandemic. Um, and so the time that staff would be working with user groups and people coming into the office all day long has switched to this. And so we are making a big shift. I mean, once agencies and a lot of these things are up, once the design is up and running, um, Taylor um, is responsible for the event calendar and the blog, and those are her big responsibilities. It'll be directly linked with Facebook and Instagram, where she puts a lot of the effort now. Um, and then I'll, we'll have to figure out who's updating the rest. But it's uh, we've thought about that, Wall, and it's um, doable. It makes our job easier. And in regards to the marketing component, because people have more reason to come here now they just come for an event if you're visiting but now you need you can be an artist you can update you have your own profile you know jamie will be able to make her own profile on this page that will link to her website or her company um her company is an organization will have its own profile um i, I think there's going to be more reason when someone calls a city and says i need a, what's the permit i need we're going to have links to it on here. So we're going to be driving everybody here. Um, and then the public art directory will be another layer of driving. So I think it's going to be kind of self-promoting in that way, although we'll have to put some money to that. And, and the way you're building it too, it looks like in the arts and culture section, you could be, we always talked about us being the resource for finding right. artists and stage managers and the things you need to do an event. And this could be our virtual resource center. That's exactly what it's going to be. So it's not an event calendar anymore. Um, it's that resource platform. And I wanted to share um, from the master plan. Let's see here. Just one of the initiatives. We focus a lot on the calendar, but one of the other initiatives of the master plan was to, and I can't find the actual wording here. Um, to, but basically to develop a website that's an artist resource and database um, for the creative community. Um, and we were gonna develop our own city website for that. And it, I don't know why it took us so long to figure out, oh, this is it. But yeah, it this, started, en this encompasses all of it. 
it really kind of clicked this last, I would say, what month, Tristan? It was like, well, yeah. this is our website. You know what I mean? Um, and we could even we even have frequently asked questions because of all of those issues of people, artists working with the city. How do you start a mural in Marquette? You know, what do you need? You want a festival. You're an artist. You know, all those questions can link you right to those applications, those permits, those policies. Um, and that's something that we talked about with the chamber, um, organizing that for people. Um, that might not happen right away, but that's what we hope to have in resources, is to help people navigate. So you guys have done an incredible job just even beginning to look at this and this massive amount of information and data. So congratulations. Yeah. Uh, my question becomes, once this is kind of revamped, who administers this? Is that going to continue to be in the the arts uh, uh, committee, the, the arts staff, or does that get passed off to someone else again? Now, this is who we are. This is our identity. I mean, this is this is uh, cementing us. This is giving us. This is becoming like the commission said, kind of who we are and what we do. So this is our resource page that we're responsible for updating. And these are the resources that we uh, will provide to the community. This is our job. So cool. I, I feel like this really also, um, um, I mean, it's gonna have the city logo on it. It's basically our website. It's if you go to our web, city website for arts, this is gonna come up. Um, and it's gonna be a way for us to, a tool for us to service all those clients that come in our office that we have to give all these individual pieces of paper to, to kind of guide them through this, um, to show them, you know, how to access everything. What, what kinds of groups uh, around town do any kind of advertising out of the area for Marquette? Because this would be a good source for them to include in any out advertising. That's, that's really good. Um, Taylor is working on the advertising package Two, there's going to be when it's done. Here is the package, and this is what you benefit. You know, um, if you if you, could, if you could get in with people who are doing advertising outside of the area for Marquette, and have them piggyback this site, like maybe give them some exposure on here, so that they will give you exposure where they're advertising. It's like that, would, the that would probably most likely be Travel Marquette is right. the immediate yeah. one. Right. And we may have a connection with that fairly soon. So we'll talk Good. about that at another time. That's Good. right. Yep. That way everybody kind of piggybacks and helps each other. And then this could be a good source for outside of the community when they hear about Marquette. Well, hey, I want to learn more about it. Here you go. <laughs> here's, here's who we are. What this I can tell you about working for. Yeah, this is, this is do, helping us do our jobs, Michael, just so you're clear. Like this is going to make our lives easier and make us more impactful and effective. Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> um, it, the, the one thing I'll say about working with Travel Marquette, especially in light of now with their revenues being down as, much, as well, is if they can be given something like this that has this in a very well presented manner, they'll love this and just mm -hmm. be able to get all this without having to do it themselves. Could team up together and brand each other and yeah, be great. Any suggestions for names? Um, John Swenson, our director, suggested up here at the, uh, where Market says Market 365, what is it? City Scene Marquette's Cultural Guide. Um, City Beat, City Scene, the scene is taken from the Mining Journal. I don't know if they would be open to the scene. Um, City Beat, I don't know. We're open to names. Um, we want to, you know, name this so it's a it's a resource. It's a market market virtual square. <laughs> Where when what is your timeline in terms of um, going with this? I mean, what are you thinking? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, the sooner the better. It's it's my main focus right now. Um, really 
Well, we have a lot of good support from Jeff. They've been really responsive to us. They're just kind of waiting on us to give our final ideas right now. And I think it'll only be a matter of days cool. until we get it going. Jeff is um, the director our, of Artopolis. Artopolis? Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, well, I'm just curious because in terms of like, you know, any of these things of naming or any of those other types of things, um, having a timeline would help. I would say, I don't know if you're saying maybe the start of the fourth quarter of the year or something or whatever, you know, just early, having early September. Yeah, I would say. Yeah. Um, you know, the idea is it, I want to keep it arts and culture heavy. The community is there, but arts is the main focus we want artists to find it easily so I like the idea of culture being in the title but also for it to be encompassing to everybody um, other communities there's one that had it's called the current or I forget uh, currents yeah currents um, so like what would appeal to the theater community or the music community for a name it'd be fun to have a nice snappy name well, let's do this. Why don't we put this on next month's agenda, you know, to have a follow up report on it, see how the construction is coming. And mm -hmm. if anybody has any suggestions for possible names, send them to Tristan, send them to Tina and just say, here's some thoughts. Uh, maybe we can pick that up a little bit. If we know that we're not looking at this flying until early September, there's a little bit of time in there to do some of those things, but you still got to build the, you know, the bones of it, which are, you know, that's going to take a while. So uh, I would say let's just pick it up next month at our next meeting with an update and show us how it's coming. And I just think it's great. I think it's a, a great improvement. It's needed it for a while. And, and, and I'm looking forward to it being more complete. We're working, we're hoping to work with a graphic designer that we're approaching. And so if you have names, it's, it's going faster than um, maybe the first week meeting in August. Um, I'm thinking actually, Tristan, if some of those uh, directory, those subcategories, the subcategories of arts, maybe that's something that we could send to the group for them to give their preferences and feedback individually. Um, yeah, I would recommend doing that and everybody can send in what they feel as they feel, so. Right, that would be helpful. Um, we are reaching six to almost 6.30 here, and uh, I know we got a few other things to get into here, so I'm just uh, encouraging that we move along here into the uh, conversation about the presentation, arts and culture presentation and strategic plan. Tina, what do you have on that? And I just want to, um, Tristan, please welcome. You're, you're welcome to stay, but if you want to go home and relax, no. you're welcome to do that too. I'll stay. Okay. Um, the AC presentation, um, I know, Walt, we just wanted, and maybe we keep it on the agenda for a while, but it um, it really was nice to see kind of even for our, ourselves working on it, uh, gave us a roadmap to help clarify where we're going. And I know you wanted to maybe um, talk a little bit about the future and where we're going and what we have to check off our list and strategic plan. Well, as I mentioned in my comments uh, in my report, it was uh, abundantly clear that the commission is interested in movement on this cultural trail project project within the next 12 months. I mean, I don't want to, or whoever goes and does the next presentation, I wanted to be able to say that this is something that got done. Um, so we can buckle down on that a little bit more. Um, and in terms of the strategic plan, we are coming up on a time now where our original arts and culture strategic plan is about a year, is it, Tina, or two years away that we should be starting to think about the next strategic planning process for arts and culture. And um, I think we'll be talking about that a little bit more here uh, in the next couple of meetings. But um, the big thing is, is we have seen by doing just a few things in our presentation, which again is available on the city's YouTube site, the video of it, and you can watch what we talked about. And Tina can send you uh, the PowerPoint slides if you would like that. Let I'd her like know. I'd like to see that. Yeah, she just just send them um, to everybody, I guess, Tina, and just if people want to look at them. Um, I just really kind of talked through them as I do. It really, I just pretty much read them in a 
authoritative voice and sounded like I knew what I was talking about and it was fine. You guys know you're on the stage a lot. Um, but, uh, you know, that kind of thing. But Tina can send those to you. But there were points of the strategic plan that were highlighted in this particular presentation that have been activated or are being executed through these changes right now with the website and, and the focus of the center not being so much a programming source, but an information and uh, a resource center. And um, I think that probably in this next year, I've already talked to Tina a little bit about getting together with John Swenson from Community Services to kind of look at the document and say, what have we done? And now what should we be looking at for the problem when it comes up again? I think we're two years out before it's done, Tina, or so something? It was 2014. Yeah. It was the draft was first presented. So, I mean, this next year we're looking at six years and it was a 10 year plan. Mm -hmm. So, um, but those can always be changed, you know? So I think that before, like, for example, my time is done here uh, with the committee, I think it would be good for us to just kind of go over it and say, here's what we've been able to do. Here's what's still areas of opportunity and, and get those things done under the next couple, three years, so. And I'll send everyone again the link, I know I have in the past, to the plan. Um, I probably should start highlighting or you know maybe a, a document that I can highlight like the things that we've done. Um, yeah, you guys did that. You did you guys did do that very well for my notes when I was up there doing the presentation about parts of the master plan for arts and culture that have been done and are being worked on. I would say that if you could do that for everybody, that would be good. But I think that soon here we as a committee should just look at it and say, here's what's been done and what we need to do. Okay. And send out the link uh, to the video of the meeting if people want to see it. But if you send out the, uh, the, the PowerPoint slides, you'll pretty much get the idea of what was talked about. Do you guys have any uh, questions or thoughts on strategic planning process right now? Okay. Hearing none, then we will move on to public comment. Is there any public comment? Hearing none, uh, we move to good of the order. And um, I guess I'll just kind of let people round robin with good of the order as to what may be happening. Go ahead. I see. <laughs> um, okay, go ahead. Uh, well, uh, each Thursday night at 7.30, uh, go on uh, Facebook, the Hiawatha uh, Facebook site. Uh, we're doing a live performance. Uh, someone is uh, doing a live performance from our office, The Fold. And that's going to be through the end of August. Uh, we have performers booked this coming Thursday is going to be Dylan Trost and Friends. Uh, and Michael, you said every Thursday night at 7.30? Yes. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, we're working on uh, continuing that uh, from a recovery perspective from COVID. Uh, we've really been working on getting some of those uh, recovery funds and the grants. So um, there is a special t-shirt that has been printed for all you people who like to get your Hiawatha t-shirt each year at the festival. Uh, we have a non-festival t-shirt this year that can be purchased. I think it's 20 or $25. So you can go online and buy that and go to Dead River Coffee, buy a t-shirt because Dead River is giving Hiawatha 50% of the proceeds from the sales of their uh, t-shirts. Mm. So uh, we're looking at uh, gearing up for uh, a time when we can... Uh, do some things outside and uh, maybe start gathering. Uh, that may be uh, when we have, uh, can do uh, aerial distribution of COVID vaccines, I guess, I don't know. But uh, that's, that's, that's what's up with us. Just as a, as a quick note, uh, the Hiawatha events are at seven, not 7.30. Thank you. Um, that's right. Sorry. 
We are, <laughs> I'm currently um, thinking about possibly within my company, um, doing a sort of invite only guerrilla theater type staged reading performance of a production in August. Um, it would be a play called The Last Days of Judas Iscariot. It's very socially and politically relevant. It was very funny too. And the play it takes place in a courtroom in purgatory. So it's really good for social distancing. Um, uh, and it would be a stage reading. So we would have, you know, five rehearsals outside. I'm still really on the fence about it. I have secured the rights and the venue, uh, but I'm still not entirely sure. I've been talking a lot to Bill Dignite because they are planning on doing a full on production of their postponed production of Cats outside in, in the parking lot of the dome at the end of August. And I called him, I'm like, how, how are you doing that? And he was just like, oh, well, we're keeping our audience socially distanced. And I'm like, no, I get that because, you know, the city band is, is outside, outside performances. I get it. But how are you keeping like the student actors safe? Like, what's your procedures and protocols? And he's like, honestly, we have like 15 different sets of procedures and protocols that we're trying to figure out right now. And we're not even sure because honestly, within the next couple of weeks, we could all be under a government a governor order that we can't even gather in groups outside anymore. <laughs> so it's really hard to plan anything right now, but for some reason, I'm finding myself planning something with the thought that we have to be okay to let it go at any moment. And I'm totally okay to let it go at any moment, but it is just a really um, anxiety inducing and weird place for me to be at as a human right now, but here we are. <laughs> so if that does happen, uh, it would be the first weekend of August and I'll be sure to let you guys know about it and we'll go from there. Any other good of the order? Can't, can't hear you. Oh, there. Oh, had you, now I lost you. Oh. Uh, okay. Well, um, I guess at that point, all we all we've really heard of late is we know Beer Fest got canceled, so not a surprise there. But it's one of those summers that it's going to be like that now. So I've been thinking that the next big thing is going to be created this summer. We just don't know what it is because it's going to grow out of something that happened. I just hope it's not on the beach in Marquette. Anyway. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave it all at that. Um, it looks like our next meeting would be on Thursday, August 13th. That is the second Thursday of the month of August. Um, of course, we know that that always can be somewhat changed because of people's schedules and this time of year. But uh, really, I'm looking forward to getting our committee more fortified with people. And there's some interesting folks coming on board if it all goes right. And uh, that should be pretty good. Um, other than that, I would call for adjournment. Those in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 All right. We are adjourned at 6.40 p.m. Thank you, everybody, and uh, we will see you soon. Thank you. Thank you all. Be safe out there.